sure you've noticed when you go down to the ocean that there's lots of rubbish in the ocean and all of us need to keep the ocean clean because our fish and our birds and everybody needs clean ocean and so do we and the theme of my book mermaids are cool is take care of the ocean because the ocean takes care of you so tonight i'm going to read your story called garbage grounds the sea butterflies and you're going to hear about a mermaid called lemuria and another mermaid called ocean Impta. so one day lemuria mermaid found all the beautiful sea butterflies lying at the bottom of the waves on the sandy ocean floor when she asked them what they were doing they said they couldn't flap their wings anymore their wings were heavy and gritty Lemuria Mermaid is the healing mermaid, so she knew that she would have to find out what had happened to the sea butterflies to stop them from flapping their wings. She asked the sea butterflies how this had happened. When had they first noticed their wings feeling heavy and gritty? The sea butterflies thought and thought. Why, they had been feeling it for some time, they said, and they had begun to wonder if it had anything to do with all the garbage that they'd noticed in the ocean. One day, in fact, the littlest sea butterfly, Tinnaletta, had barely been able to swim home to the reef. She'd been caught up in a plastic bottle top and she could not get her wings free. Tinnaletta was afraid that she would never be able to get home. But suddenly, a friendly washy wave had lifted her up in the bottle top and had washed her home. When she finally got back to Sea Butterfly Sanctuary, all the other sea butterflies flapped their wings extra hard so that Tinnaletta was washed out of the bottle top and she could move her wings again. Since that time, the sea butterflies had been more aware of what was happening in the ocean of Sea Butterfly Sanctuary. As much as they tried to keep it free of garbage, every day more and more rubbish swept into Sea Butterfly Sanctuary. And now the worst had happened. The sea butterflies could not flap their wings any more. And if they couldn't flap their wings, they couldn't swim. And if they couldn't swim, they couldn't feed themselves and each other. And if they couldn't feed themselves, then they'd die. Lemuria Mermaid knew that she could not let that happen. We cannot have an ocean with no sea butterflies, she thought. We cannot have a world with no sea butterflies. I must heal the sea butterflies and then I must talk to Ocean Impta Mermaid to see if we can find a way to heal the oceans so that sea butterflies will have clean water to swim and feed in. Because if the sea butterflies are being trapped by the garbage in the ocean, then so will all the other ocean creatures and even mermaids. Firstly, Lemuria Mermaid swam off to Mermaid Cave to bring in extra supplies of mermaid magic. She gathered all the magic she could carry and then swam swiftly back to Sea Butterfly Sanctuary. She sprinkled mermaid magic on the wings of every sea butterfly to clear out the garbage and its effects from their wings. In a minute and a second, the sea butterflies began to feel better. They could flap their wings again and they could swim to the tiniest seaweed banks to feed on the tiniest, juiciest seaweed morsels. The sea butterflies were all very grateful to Lemuria Mermaid for healing them. Lemuria Mermaid was glad that the sea butterflies were well again, but she knew that only half of her job was done. She swam and swam as swiftly as she could to find Ocean Impta Mermaid. Ocean Impta Mermaid knew that people were responsible for all the garbage that was floating in the world's oceans. So she told Lemuria Mermaid it is the responsibility of people everywhere to keep the oceans clean. Somehow we must make them see how important it is to have clean oceans, she said and Lemuria Mermaid nodded her head in agreement. So Ocean Impta and Lemuria reached into their mermaid magic seaweed sacks and pulled out their special secret shells. They beat out a loud drumming rhythm on the shells, which the ocean waves carried all around the world. People all over the world came out to see what the drumming was all about, and Ocean Impta had engaged all the world's mermaids to travel to every country to explain to the people there how the garbage they were throwing into the world's oceans was affecting all the ocean creatures. And the world was in danger of having no more ocean creatures in its oceans. The people were ashamed at how careless they'd been by throwing their garbage into the sparkly salty world's oceans and endangering all the ocean creatures. Ocean Impta, Lemuria and all the mermaids told the people that they were all responsible for keeping the oceans clean 
and so they were all responsible for cleaning up the mess they'd made. Now you must clean up all your garbage, said the mermaids. How? asked the people. Ocean Emptor was quite a mathematical genius, and she had worked out a clever solution. Every day, for a year and a day, every person will pick up 17 pieces of garbage from the ocean, she said, and the other mermaids echoed her words all around the world. And you will not throw any more garbage into the ocean. So the people agreed that from now on they would not throw any more rubbish into the oceans of the world, and that for a year and a day they would each pick up 17 pieces of garbage every day. So the sea butterflies can now sleep easy at night, knowing that they will not be in danger from garbage in the oceans any more, and neither will any of the world's sea creatures. Well, I hope that when you go to the ocean, you pick up your 17 pieces of garbage, because I see garbage floating past me, and I swim after it, and I pick it up, and I take it out, and I throw it in the bin. And you won't believe it, but every year and it's probably more every year 66 million tons just of plastic gets thrown into the ocean so we really need to stop doing that and clean up the oceans now i'm going to read you a poem about an alien um it's in my book oz was have you ever met an alien um i don't think i've met an alien but maybe maybe there are some aliens that we don't even know are aliens because maybe they look like us so this poem is called Suburban Alien. Buried in suburbia, where the lawns are neat and trim, I came upon an alien made entirely of tin. We sat a while and chatted, and then it rained fit to bust. I must start moving quick, he said, or I'll begin to rust. We don't have rain up on my star. The water is too thick by far. We drink green slime. It tastes like lime, and really I prefer it. Your rain is cool and sweet and nice, but too much cold turns it to ice. Green slime doesn't give us trouble. It floats around and turns to bubbles. We don't have rain up on my star. The water is too thick by far. We drink green slime. It tastes like lime, and really I prefer it. You must come too up on my star. It's not too close and not too far. You'll see the moon and lots of stars, and even one quite close to Mars. It's lots of fun up on my star, my star that's near, not really far. We sing fine tunes upon our moons. I play quite well upon guitar. But one thing you must not forget, before your trip you get set, to pack your bags quite full of rain. To be without it would be a pain, because... We have no rain up on my star. The water is too thick by far. We drink green slime. It tastes like lime. And really, I prefer it. You know, Hawaii is a microcosm well, of the world with people here from all over the world. Alien. And no I one know Hawaii I is a microcosm of the traditional water. arts of the world with beautiful patterns water. from many countries. And They've been in business for 38 years That's with wonderful nice. Hawaii design batik clothing. Their hand-dyed and handmade clothes have patterns that are based on traditional kapa and tapa designs from Hawaii, Polynesia, Micronesia, Indonesia, even New Zealand and Africa. So check out all of the wonderful um, items that Noah Noah has on their website, which is www.noanoahawaii.com. So I'll be back next week, so bye for now.